The Frieden STW10 is an impressive mechanical calculator from the 50s, and I sometimes get requests to take some footage of it. But when I take it out after six months of not using it, there is invariably something wrong with it. Usually not a big deal now that it has been fully repaired, just a lazy lever here and there. But it's never the same one, and I always end up learning something new about this amazing machine. This time though, while I was running tests, I discovered something I never knew was not working, and that I had never fixed before. In this case, my problem was carry propagation. It stopped after 12 digits. Here you can see the repair machine being cranked by hand, and the carry propagates in a ripple, then stops. It does this correctly now, after 14 digits. But why not the whole 20 digits? It will take a little bit of a deep dive into the mechanics of the beast to find out. Oh, that is very satisfying. The first thing to notice is that there is a different number of digits in the different sections of the machine. So 20 digits in the accumulator, 11 on the counter, 10 columns of digits in the main keyboard. The multiplier over here has 10 digits. And this is something quite usual that you see also in computers. Multiplication registers usually are twice as large as the main bit width. The multiplication of two 32-bit numbers will give you a 64-bit result. Here the Frieden can multiply two 10-digit inputs and therefore needs a 20-digit result accumulator. And then you see how that's going actually. The calculating portion is only this wide, 10, and it just steps through it. So it only rotates here. But something that I had not recognized is that since the calculation section is only a wide, how does it do the carry through the whole thing? And uh, how does it reach the end? And the answer is that in some situations, it does not. Let me show you. So in this example, I'm just going to add one each time. And I'm going to put everything at 9. So 99999. So these are 10 units that are right over the mechanism. So you expect if, that if I add 9 to this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, to this 10 units, it would add 1 to the next. And it did. So this number got it scary. So, okay, that's all fine and dandy, see how far it goes. See if it does it. Okay, still doing it. 11, 12, 13, so 13 digits still does it. 14 digits still works. And see if it carries to the 15th digit. And you can see it did not. It's all zero, so it's, it stops propagating at uh, 14. And when it does that, it warns you about it. You heard it ding. And there's a test to make sure that the carry works properly, which simply consists of making sure the bell rings in all overflow conditions. But mine never rang. So I soon figured out that the carry stopped at the 12th digit. There's something very special that happened at, at the junction between 12 and 13 but you'll see that they went to quite an effort to get it up to 14. These are the little gears that turn the engage over here and they turn the number. So if you want to uh, add four you just you know get this one to turn four times and the way this is done in most machines, I see if I can focus manually on it. It just has a set of gears with some um, partial teeth in it. There you go, the one with a lot of teeth, the one with a few teeth in the middle. There is a little gear that engages. Where is that one? Right here. 
and so when it's at position 9 it will face a gear that turns uh, that, that has 90s 80s 70s 60s 5 now it uses the bottom gear 4 3 2 1 and 0 so let's put it at 9 for example let's give it a 12 and you should see the top gear engage and turn nine times and then see this one will turn and it has turned exactly 90s so the partial teeth gear is the basic trick for counting and adding but you need one more trick obviously to make a real adder and the second one is to do a carry and the way the carry is done is an interaction between the carriage and this little fellow here. If you look at the carriage and you look underneath, it has this little guys over here. And these are the carry levers. And every time it goes to nine, let's see if I can catch it. Uh, there you go. So each time you go from nine to zero, it blips the carry lever. That carry lever engages into this little thing of the next digit. So this digit carry lever engages into here and will engage this one and that will be the carry. I'll set them all. I set all the carries. So they are all advanced by one. Bloom, 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 bloom. Let's do it okay, that's really neat. So once again this one is in the cycle weight reset. I cannot push it. And same over here. So let's try it again. Carry ripple. And, and you might wonder oh, how come you can calculate with a machine that doesn't propagate uh, the carry all the way. And it turns out in normal usage it doesn't matter very much because let's try to multiply a big 10 digit number by another 10 digit number. And the first thing it's going to do is going to clear everything, so it's going to be all kind of zeros up in the register. All clear. And then it progressively gets to it. As long as there's an overlap with the 14 digit, it's going to you know, progressively get to it. A carry only goes this way and it, it gets to it eventually. Uh, same goes for division. If I do a division and it's going to subtract from here and I'm going progressively to have zero so it really doesn't matter. So it's all zeroing it out. And you no, know, by the time the carry is out of reach, it's zero anyhow, so it, it doesn't matter at all. So the only time where it actually matters is if you have a very large number in the accumulator already. And let's do one, two, three, four, five. And so let's imagine I'm, I'm, I'm Bill Gates and I'm counting my trillions of dollars and I'm adding one cent. I'll put it back over here. Okay, so we can see them all. And now I'm going to add one. And that didn't work, right? It didn't go to, to the number uh, 15. So that's the only situation where it's a, it's a problem. And you could tell that it's an afterthought even to get it to uh, 14 digits. Because the original machine uh, has only uh, up to 12. Here's the Frieden H8, the ancestor of our STW by many decades, manually operated. And if you look at the mechanism, you can tell it's the same, but it has only 12 rollers equipped for carry. So clearly the 13th and 14th uh, carry digits are an afterthought. And you can easily tell that the 13th and 14th digits carry rollers are of a completely different design. They are what they call the uh, spring carry. 
And these are the ones that were uh, not uh, working at all in my system, so I could only carry up to the uh, 12th digit. Phew, sorry for the long-winded explanation. I found about my problem in a roundabout way while doing a bell test. The bell is supposed to warn you at the end of the carry chain to alert you that you had an overflow at the 14th digit and that your calculation is likely invalid. Pretty important bell it is. But I was never hearing the bell at all. And that's just not working. And the reason turned out. Okay, let's. Oh, I should be able to crank it. There we go. That it doesn't reset properly here. There is a little bar that moves. Uh, let's do it again. And it doesn't go far enough. It never catches. It should go further. And I can't do it. There you go. And engage that thing, and it never does. Uh, and this is actuated by a cam, which is also completely buried at the back of the machine. Let's see if I can show it. And the cam, well, it's going to be totally impossible. Here you go, here's the mechanism. So here's the cam. Here is the roller that goes on it and it will move that little ratchet back and I have to bend the cam which will be an interesting thing. Uh, so that never worked on my machine. Uh, I, I never knew so it's only when I did the, the manufacturing test that I found out. It took me a long time to even find the damn roller. It's completely buried in the middle of the machine. This bad boy out here riding on th this one out there and then there is an arm to the right of it that you have to bend somehow <laughs> <laughs> i remove the motor and it, it's not that hard actually just slides out and the way it's coupled is there is this paper disc there's another one on the other side and there's this that goes between this and the clutch and there's a similar part that mounts on the other side so that's pretty good. And I found a spring. I definitely found a missing spring. That's in the division mechanism somewhere. Between this and that. Okay, so the, the roller itself is super hard to reach. And the best way I found is to use some pliers in here and try to get to it. Unfortunately, the division parts are in the middle. So I cannot get a good grab of it. I was to the point where I could latch one of the two. Okay, the left one is latching and drags the right one, but not enough. I did fight with the rollers and the levers forever and even removed locking claws trying to bend the second lever, but I could never get the second lever to lock. The roller and the cam had too much wear and I could not compensate for it by bending only. It's almost enough but not quite enough. This one catches, this one needs a little bit of encouragement so I'll just file it. Okay, desperate moment after a full day of trying, here comes the Dremel. Ah, almost, almost, almost. There we go. All right. Phew. Finally, after a long day of work, it's time to put the motor and the carriage back in for a test. There you go. 
Yep. Well, no. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I, I, I did get everything. I didn't get the fourteen. I didn't get the last one. Shoot. Dang, there's progress. We have one more carry on digit 13, but no cigar, digit 14 still has no carry. And I can clearly see that one uh, spring transfer is working and the other is not. They both reset correctly now. Let me put them like this. They'll reset. And if I set this one manually, you know, watch this shaft is going to move. Toom. It just moves one notch this way. Reset, watch it. Okay, let's move it as it should. But this one does not, so I have to do both of them at the same time for it to work. So this one will interlock the other one. If I do this, it did release the lever, but that did not turn the wheel. Well, I don't understand why that doesn't happen. So resets correctly. Unlatches correctly. Does not turn the wheel. I, I remove the, uh, the, the the catch bars here. And I can actuate it by hand. And you can hear this little ratchet. And here, it's not ratcheting. It's buried down there. Okay, so there is a part that's stuck. There's a ratchet that's stuck on that one. But how to get to it, that's the problem. I got it. So there is a ratchet. It's tiny, it's black on black. But I found a way to activate it more by feel than by seeing it. And uh, I use my night oil. And the, the night oil trick works if you can put it at the right place. And if you can actuate the thing, if you can't actuate it back and forth, it won't do anything. So but I found a way to pick it back and forth and it freed up after maybe 50 movements. The first ones were very, very tight. I had to force it. Okay, so I remounted my little claws here and didn't lose any of the springs in the machine. And now you can see if I set the two, the two transfers, then the two, the two shafts work as intended. Yay, it works! My bell works again because only sensitive on the last digit that's over the last transfer. So now that I am in the home position, if I do minus one, ding, I have. And those are my uh, spring transfers, 13 and 14, so they all work. All right, we're all set. We can hear our warning bell. But I definitely learned a thing or two, and I hope you did too. So now it dings correctly, but interestingly, multiplication with large numbers work, but if you want to do an addition, it only works up to 14 more digits than the current position of the carriage. Wouldn't you know it?